Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you a really cool snook spot that I just found and kind of explain why I thought the snook would be there. I've really been struggling with snook lately and it was really rewarding to think through where I thought they would be and find them. So I'll explain what I was using, where I was and why. Maybe I found a new little snook spot. I've never fished here before. Look at this gorgeous fish come out from the boat there, buddy. Oh, that's a, that's a donkey. That's a donkey. And then also in this video, I'm going to show how I was using my radar. I actually wasn't fishing today. Today was a day I was going to go out and just get some bait traps that I had left out. And my plan was to just pin up some bait for later in the week when I have more time. I got to watch the Niners Eagles game with some family, so I didn't have a ton of time. I got caught in some serious pea soup fog, and I am so happy I had radar. It gave me tons of confidence. So I'll, I'll show kind of how I was using the radar. I'll kind of walk through a little bit of that. I'm not a Simrad expert, I'm not a radar expert, but I can show how I did it and what gave me confidence to go in that pea soup. Obviously, it's a beautiful Southwest Florida day right now, but just an hour ago, it didn't look like this at all. In fact, even being in the canal, I'd have been freaked out without radar. So I'm gonna stop here and try the spot. The reason I'm picking this spot is the tide is really ripping and it's, I'm getting a little bit of shelter here you can see how it's really ripping around the end here. I was over there, I was gonna fish that point and I was on a nine on my Minn Kota, it's way too fast. So I'm sitting over here, I'm on a two or a three and there's some nice overhang to fish. I'm just gonna work my way down here. Hopefully I'll pick up something. Probably, this looks like snook, snook area to me. today. I had to get it all the way in there that tight though. I mean you can see I fished all around that. I don't know if I filmed each cast but it took until I risked it to get deep 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 in there and that's the only reason I took this fish. Beautiful snow. Okay, nice, nice. Happy with that. Get in there buddy. Yeah, oh, that's satisfying. That is very, very satisfying. Oh, barely had him hooked. Good thing I grabbed the net. Look at that. Look at that, barely, barely, barely hooked. Gorgeous fish. I'm loving it. There's my fog fish. Today was more about navigating than it was about fishing, but I'll, I'll take this. I don't want to take the time to measure him. I'll put him back. He's not the biggest one I've ever caught by any means, but that's a beautiful fish. Oh, you gonna suck my thumb, buddy? You got a thumb sucker, huh? No. Are you ready? Oh, there you go. There you go, buddy. <laughs> He's ready to rock. That was awesome. I'd say that was 24, 20, 22 to 24 inches, maybe. Oh, one bait left. Getting that one last bait out of the well is a pain in the butt. I'm gonna actually turn it off and start draining it. I might not be able to get this guy. <laughs> All right, buddy, you're losing volume. There we go. There we go. This is an athletic pinfish. Let's put them to use. One thing I like to do with pinfish is grab them like this and fold all their fins in so they don't prick you. They're aptly named. They have the right name, pinfish. They are prickly. This is a three-out hook. I'm just going up through the nose here. You want to make sure you get up through the nostril there. If you just go through lips, it'll come off. This is 60 pound, yeah, that's heavy, but look where I'm fishing. You know, I'm gonna need 60 pound right there. I wanna get it in there as close as I can. Ah, two more feet would have been good. All right, last bait, is he lucky? I think sometimes they'll just, they'll just try it out. They're not always in a huge hurry. The snooks don't have teeth to cut, so, you know, they're, they're sucking it in. 
the bite to me, I grew up in Minnesota, the bite is very much like a largemouth bass. It's just they're a lot bigger and a lot meaner. Every now and then you'll get one that just tears off, but most of the time it'll be a big pop and then a run. So you do get a you do get about maybe a two second warning. And when these fish run, I'm expecting them to run with the current. So I've got to make sure I'm pulling this way away from that bush. Hopefully I can fight them over here. I'm always thinking about that when I'm fishing in heavy cover is which way is he going to go? And typically they're going to go with the tide. You know, I guess the way I think about it is if you lived on a hill and you stole the last cookie from your lady friend and she found out, would you run uphill against the tide or would you run downhill with the tide? I'm taking that cookie downhill. She's faster than me anyway. I got a bad toe. The camera reset that cast. I just wasn't in as far as I wanted. And I'm gonna reset it. I don't like it. I want to get laying in there. I gotta risk it for the biscuit. Yes, you know, so I'm in a spot. All these boats are going by. I don't know. They're going driving by. 25, 28 inch stones. Go. Okay. 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 I'm in the twigs. All right. It pulled out. All right. It pulled out. It pulled out. I'll try that again. That would have been good if I'd have been over a little bit. Recalibrate. Check the wind. First rotation. Go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm loving that. You gotta risk it. They're in tight. Ooh, that felt like a pickup. Yeah, that's a fish. He, he, he hit it again, but he doesn't have it. Even though I'm in tight, I'm gonna wait for my rod to double over. With these circle hooks, you just can't be too quick on them. I got 60 pound test on and I got my drag on lockdown. I just don't want him getting back in there. So I'm gonna sacrifice. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good fish. She's gonna jump again. Come on, buddy. Maybe I found a new little snook spot. I've never fished here before. The spot I wanted to fish was unfishable due to the tide ripping so darn hard. Look at this gorgeous fish come out from the boat there, buddy. Oh, that's a, that's a donkey. That's a donkey. That is a donkey. Come on, baby. Oh, find your homie. Yeah, that, that is a big one. That's a big boy right there. Oh, yeah. I am happy with that. Ed. Look how thick he is. Big old healthy snook. We better put a measure on him. Open up, buddy. Come on, I take pride in taking good care of you guys. Oh boy, you're big. He didn't mind the 60 pound test, I guess. Normally I wouldn't go that heavy, but I've broken up some fish lately. I've just, I'm tired of it, to be honest. So I think that's gonna be my new jam. I'm just tired of breaking off fish. He's getting nervous. There he goes. Oh boy, we're not gonna get this fish. No, nope. Jesus, dog monster. Look at that bad boy. Let's put a measure on her. I got my stick right here. Ooh, she's 27, 20 with the, with a beautiful lower lip there. I'm gonna give that one 28. Let's be kind to her. Take your time. You don't want to be in a rush here. If I let this fish go too soon, it bellies up. I'll feel terrible. Had it out of the water a little bit because I wanted to get a measure. So now the fins are starting to come back to life. Come on, baby. Give me that big old shake, snook snook. Beautiful fish. On a fish like that, you gotta use these grips. They're so strong. I mean, it was 27 and a half, 28 inches. 
but he was heavy. I, I'm a fisherman. I don't get playing your music like that. This ain't a club. We're not in Miami. We're in Snookville, dude. <laughs> you listen to your music. I'm gonna catch Snook right there. That's my spot. It's pretty cool to find a brand new spot too. And especially on a foggy day like this where, you know, exploring definitely wasn't in the cards. Not foggy now, it just lifted like half hour ago. But I mean, there's, there's these trees here, obviously. But the way the tide's coming around, it just felt like there was a break and there just happens to be a seven foot hole right here. So it's like there's warmer water here. The water is quite cold for Southwest Florida standards. And so I feel like they've got a nice little spot here. They can, they can live in this general area, depending on the tide and depending on the, the temperature throughout the day. So I don't know, I stopped here. I'm marking this spot, that's for sure. That's, that's two toads that I caught. Uh, Definitely got a morning made for radar. Glad I have it. Definitely used it. This is pretty cool. I had to put this on film. There's my my bait pot is right there. I dropped the number on it, and you can see it here on the radar. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's so flat out here. I could see my weight coming through on the radar as well. But that's my that's my buoy in the water. Here they are. Pretty cool. ends right there and one two three one two three look at that pretty cool i saw all those guys coming and was able to know if i have enough room and kind of get over everybody's going slow here so far this is a pretty congested area normally first time i've been out in this fog and i gotta tell you uh props to dave russo fish deals for telling me you're gonna want to get radar i would not be out here i'm having a, a pretty cool day using my my boat definitely not a toy um that is the that was some serious safety equipment I have there. I'm gonna keep filming a little bit. I got one spot to fish up here. I'm really gaining some confidence in my in my radar. This isn't a situation where I would want to go out in, in this. I, that's not who I am. I, I not, I'm not a risk taker. I, I wouldn't have gone out if I knew it was this piece suit. But I got all the way out to where I wanted to be, playing around fishing and having a fun time. And then this thick fog just rolls in, and I feel safe now that I can get home in it. So. Things amazing. Okay, they don't got radar, they don't got radar. I'm probably wondering why I'm going this speed, but I can see them. They said I can see them pretty easy. So I don't want to take it for granted. But I'm getting a lot of confidence here. Alright, made it to the no way. That would have been a lot different ride back to the miserable mile if I didn't have this this radar. This is a, a Simrad. It's pretty amazing. You can see right now I don't have them overlaid. I think I need a software upgrade to do that. Uh, it'd be a lot easier if it's overlaid and I see a signal like that, it would project it there and I'd say, okay, that's where those things should be. That's not a boat. Right now, I, I don't really know. That's gonna be a little extra careful because it can't be an overlay. And I also gotta keep looking back and forth, but that went pretty good. So I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There's a boat right there. That's my edge of my distance that I can see, and that's right there. So instead of there being two poles, like here, there's three dots, and there he is right there. It looks like that's police or, or tow. Not sure, but they're gonna have a busy day today, I got a feeling. If you don't have this kind of chip and this kind of radar, you should not be out here. This is not uh, rental boat conditions. I'm on the water all the time, and this is definitely the limit of what I wanna do. Boys in blue. Props to the boys in blue. Keeping us safe. All right, here's another boat right on the edge. I'm gonna, since I'm in no way, I'm gonna go eighth of a mile. 
So look at look at how that guy's showing up right there. He's right here. He's right there. I can see him easy, but I'd say eighth of a mile is about our level of visibility right now. In conditions like this, it's really easy to overcorrect. I'm going slow. This is called the miserable mile in Southwest Florida here. I'm about halfway through it. I just want to stay to the left of that green buoy. Now, under normal conditions, I'd see that buoy, but I can't now. And so, obviously, you can see the island. I know where I am here a lot. Here comes a couple boats in the fog. They're going to start showing up right here. So that's pretty cool. Here they are. So they're an eighth of a mile away. That's my eighth of a mile ring. And there, that's what they look like. Here, here comes another one. Yep, there, there's a few boats there. Pretty cool. But you don't want to overcorrect. I know it's real shallow off to my starboard side right here. I don't want to get over there. I want to be over this side. Yeah. I didn't want to say it. Now, there's three bolts there because I couldn't see the, the third. But my radar did pick it up. Putting in time like this and really being thoughtful about what I'm looking at, I'm doing that because I want to learn. I want to get so comfortable that it's just second nature to look at these, these gauges and trust them. What I did to, to get ready for a day like this was I ran my radar a lot and I just wanted to see what does that signpost look like? What does this little skinny island here, see how it, it's real low. I don't think that's an alligator, but it kind of looks like one. Anyway, it's real low right here. So what does that look like here? You can't, you can't quite see the whole thing. So I want to know in my head, I want to match these two up. Think about what is it really? You only see that that image isn't perfect. It's really close though, I got to say. And that radar isn't perfect. They both have delays on them. The tide right now is different with the picture pretty comfortable with my settings but I really dialed that in on land so I could see things a half mile away play around with my instrumentation play around with my settings and see okay that's what that looks like so here we've got a, a stick sticking out we've got a, a marker buoy we've got the point okay, and that doesn't look like everything right what the heck is that that's all me get your lights on slow down they got their lights on that's great they got their lights on I'm no safety cop out here. I'll, I'll let the police do their job, but you know, lights on, go slow, be safe. This is supposed to be fun out here. We worked our butts off all week to go out and do this on a Sunday. Let's not screw it up. Hey, how are you now? I don't know what that guy was saying. I think he was, I think he was appreciating the Ravala 266 Cayman. You know, it's a no wake, but just like when you're at a traffic light or something, I don't trust that everybody knows that or sees that. You know, I, I'm, I'm on the lookout right now for someone to come flying through here thinking that they're, they've got, maybe they got radar and they're overconfident. I got radar and I'm still underconfident and that's, that's how I want to be. I'm good with that. We've got a guy in a jet ski, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have radar or lights. Good luck to you, buddy. It's going to get a lot of foggier out there. Probably not a day where you're going to get a lot of use out of those quad 500s, but that sure looks cool. 500 Mercs, four of them. Kamal Mass says that's 2,000 horsepower. So, really, really cool day. I'm super, I'm super happy. I'm gonna kick this off with the tequila seltzer passion fruit. Shout out to my homie Sam for turning me out of these things. I don't know what passion fruit tastes like. I don't even think that's a real fruit. Nice pop. Ah. I mean passion fruit, like, what is it? I grew up in Minnesota and I guarantee you they didn't have passion fruit up there. Maybe they do now. Our grocery store was Cub Foods. They did not have passion fruit up there. This is new to me. I'll tell you one thing I like about it is it's ice cold. It's weird how it went from foggy pea soup to just blasting sun. I mean, I don't even have lotion on. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, I didn't put lotion on. I was just gonna run out and run back and then to get caught in pea soup. I feel really gratified that I stopped on that one spot and kind of thought through where they'd be and, and had to really make some delicate casts to get in there and boom I got rewarded with some big snook. It's in a separate video but this was just yesterday. Check out the fish we caught. Crazy diverse fishery here. We, tar we were targeting more fish that we could eat throughout the week. I had a request for fish tacos which I, I typically get on Friday evenings. So we threw a bucket of shrimp together. A couple guys went out and uh, Jeff, really, Jeff really laid the wood to some fish. And we got some killer sheephead. I love the diversity out here. It's, it's way more than I would have thought. I, we literally moved to Cape Coral because 
I wanted to fish out of here, right? You know, we did the math. We looked at all these possible locations. You know, Key West was on the spreadsheet. Marco Island was on the spreadsheet. But, you know, Cape Coral just was that sweet spot. And a lot of it was cost. There's so much room in the canal. That's why my name is Canal Life. Look at the access to all these fish. It's just pretty incredible. It, it just really exceeds what I thought it would be. And I would say I'm way still in the valley of my learning curve. I got a lot to learn, especially, especially near shore and offshore. So, holy moly. Hey, how are you now? Yeah, that's a, that's a proper fit. The canals are amazing down here. I gotta start fishing more. I It's funny, I drive to other canals and fish those. And I don't fish my own. I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> that's silly, that's fisherman stuff. All right, passion fruit seltzer.